Hello, welcome to today's how-to, another episode of Rio's how-to. And this how-to is all about sync tips, the plethora of sync tips that's on the market, and how to make sense of these sync tips and when to choose what type of tip. We're going to start this whole video with a little simple lesson on physics. Here I have a brick, and here I have a table tennis ball. If I were to stand this brick on the ground and throw this tennis ball with all my might at the brick, there's no way I'm going to knock it down. The table tennis ball is just too light. But if I took a baseball or a cricket ball and did the same thing, threw, held the brick up this way and threw this, there's a lot more chance that this ball is going to knock over this brick. Why is that? Well, it's very simple. Mass moves mass. Three simple words that mean a huge amount in the world of sink tips and fishing and casting successfully. And we have to start, believe it or not, at the very, very front end of the whole rig. Your fly. Your fly is the thing you're trying to cast. The fly is the hardest thing to cast. Strange as it may sound, it is. So when you've got a fly that is nice and small and light and fluffy like this, there's not a lot of weight to it. There's not a lot of mass to that. So that means I put a tip on that doesn't weigh a lot, I can cast that. I can put on a big fly, like this string leech. It's a great big fly, but there's no weight to it. So that's also light. It doesn't have a lot of mass. So when I want to put a, a tip that casts on that, I can put on a nice lightweight tip, mass, moving mass. But when I go to a fly like this, that's got heavy dumbbell eyes on, like our animal here, there's so much weight on there with those eyes that there's mass in this, so my tip must also have mass. That is the gist of selecting tips. The heavier the fly, the more mass there must be in the tip to move it. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's the first starting point, right? Keep that in mind when you want to go to the heaviest fly, you get some giant fly with double tungsten head and cones and things like that. You've got to have the most mass in your tip you possibly can find. And that's where these tips vary. There's lots of different types of tips. I'm going to run through these different types of tips and then apply them to the right type of engine, the engine being the fly line. What is moving the tip is the fly line. And so they're all balanced. It's a whole balance thing that has got to get right. And the first tip we're going to talk about is perhaps the most commonest one, the one that everybody yaps about, is, is what's called T14. And T14, well, this is a T tip, and T basically means tungsten. That's because that's the compound in here that makes it sink. And 14, that is the important thing. 14 means every foot weighs 14 grains. That's my mass measurement. There's a T8. T for tungsten, 8. Every foot weighs eight grains. That's a lot less mass. So this is a lighter tip than the T14. There's also a T11, 11 grains a foot. There's a T17, 17 grains every foot. And there's a T20, oh, a beast, 20 grains per foot. This tip has the most mass of any tip we have. So it'll cast the biggest flies. And that's what it's good for. Now, when you apply more tungsten to make it heavier, they sink more, right? So the T20 sinks a little bit quicker than the T17, which sinks a bit quicker than the T14, and so on and so forth. So there's some element of tip choice when it comes to depth, some element, but generally, for the very best result, try and utilize the thought process of how heavy your fly is, and the heavier it is, the heavier that tip should be. And that's what T-tips are. Now, when you're fishing your way down a pool, Sometimes you're going to fish your way down a pool and you're going to fish a, a, like a deep bucket and you need to get really down. So you have a nice long sinking section. And then sometimes you're going to get down to the, the top of the pool or maybe the tail out, right, where the pool gets shallow and you want a shorter sinking section because you want to swing onto the, into the inside. So you want to fish a shorter piece of line. Well, if I took a piece of T14 and chopped off, say, 15 feet and got down and swung through the deep pool with T15, uh, T14 15 feet and then... Down the pool, I went to say two foot, two and a half foot of T14, because that's what the current speed would, uh, would dictate. Then I have a problem with casting, because I've gone from a very long tip to a very short tip, and my casting stroke changes. So an evolution of that is what's called a MO tip. MO tips are MOW, that's what a MO tip is, and basically MO tips overcome this, this variety of sinking tip lengths because Generally speaking, every mo tip is 10 foot in length. This one has seven and a half foot of floating and two and a half foot of sinking. 
right? The tip is still 10 foot long. So I'm fishing that shallow tail out. I can put this tip on. The tip's 10 foot, my casting stroke's nice, but it, it only gets down a slight fraction. And then I go to a deeper section. I can go to something like this. This is a two and a half foot, seven and a half foot. So only two and a half foot of this float, seven and a half foot of it sinks. So I can get more depth. But again, the tip is still 10 foot. That's great because I'd have to change my casting stroke. I can put on 10 foot of T11. Right, that's a 10 foot full sinking. So I get even more depth. But again, the tip is 10 foot. So the significance of a mo tip, and there's other tips beyond these 10s, there's 12 and a and there's long ones called 15s, but generally speaking, for the sake of simplicity, the idea of motips is that you can have a set length of tip and you vary the sinking length section within that for your pool depth and the current speed. So that's what motips are. And motips come in a, in a range, right? We've had T8s, T11s, T14s, T17s in the Ts. In the mos, it's about the same thing. So a T8 is a light mo tip, right? The sinking section and a light mo is made of T8. Every foot of this line weighs eight grains per foot. The T11, now we looked at that one, this is what's called a medium. So a medium size has got T11 as a sinking section. Again, every foot weighs 11 grains. There's the heavy one, T14. And there's an extra heavy, the T17. Right? This is our tip with the most mass in the Mo world. So again, the biggest fly, hey, needs the biggest tip. And the Mo tips match up to the size of head you're putting them on, right? So again, this whole little balance of things, right? You've got a heavy fly, so you need a heavy tip. You've got to have a heavy tip. You can't have a, a, a head, a Skagit head or a fly line head that you put on. It's got nice and light and delicate. And then you try and put a heavy tip with lots of mass on because you don't have mass moving mass. You have light trying to move mass. You have the ping pong ball trying to move the brick. It doesn't happen. So when you've got a Skagit head, for example, we're going to start with Skagit because it's the commonest type of head out there in the spay world. When you've got a Skagit head like this, and this one weighs 425 grains, that's a fairly light Skagit head. It's good for a six weight as a, as, as a guideline. This is where your light mo tips go on, T8 and light. So anything under about 475 grains, that is perfect for those light mows. Anything between 475 grains and 575 grains, like this 525, that's where you want your medium mows. Right, that's a good balance on that. Your heavy mows, they're going to go on anything from 575 grains up to about 650 grains. And then your heaviest lines, the Skagit heads that have 650, 700, 750 grains, lots of weight in the head, they need the T17, the extra heavy mo tips. Those are your perfect balances. And you're choosing them because you're throwing big flies and big stuff like that. So that is the significance of matching your head to your engine, to your Skagit head, your Skagit head to your tip, to your fly. That's your whole balance of things. So the casting becomes smooth and easy and not imbalanced. You don't want to mismatch things. You don't want the light head trying to move the heavy head or the heavy tip. And equally, you don't want the heaviest line trying to move a light tip. You want to have everything balanced. That was the Skagit world. The Scandi world, right? A lot of people use Scandi heads, and Scandi heads are just short for Scandinavian heads. Here's our Rio Scandi. This is a different type of head. This head has lots of long, fine tapers. It's almost all taper. So what that means with a taper is the back end might start at 20 grains per foot, but because it gets thinner and thinner and thinner, that front end might only weigh four or five or six grains per foot. And that's very light. So if this line, for example, had six grains of foot at the front end, I can't put on any of this. I can't put on my light mows, my heavy mows, because even the light mow has eight grains per foot as a, as a weight. So six, trying to move eight, becomes more of an issue. You have to cast more forcefully, harder. So when you go to lines like Scandi lines and traditional spay lines that have tapers to them and get much lighter at the front end, you go to a different style of tip, not a mo and not a T. You go to what's called a replacement tip. And a replacement tip is a lot lighter in weight, has tapers themselves, right? The mo tips don't. These have tapers themselves. So these are the tips that give you a best presentation of a small fly. They don't turn over fast and lash, which a mo tip will do, or a T tip. These will give you a nice loop formation and give you a lot of flight time when you're casting. 
No good at all with heavy flies because there's no mass in them. But beautiful for presentation, just casting, and, uh, and that kind of stuff. So good on scandy lines. And then these replacement tips, well, these vary in a number of ways, right? There's a middle number here. This says S3. And this S3 means it sinks. That's what the S is. And it sinks at three inches per second. That's what the sink rate is, three inches per second. So it sinks that much every second. Maybe that much. You could get a sink six version of that, right? And so that sinks the same amount of time, one second, but it sinks twice as fast. Six inches per second. You can get a sink eight, sink eight inches per second, and so on and so forth. So that's what the S relates to, how many inches per second. So when I want to get down with these tips, I'm going to use the faster sinking ones. And when I want to fish in shallower water or, or nearer the surface, I might go to a sink three and have less depth. The other number that's important is this hashtag number, this number eight. This means it's a number eight tip. So if I have a number eight rod and I have a number eight weight Scandi line, then this is the right type of tip to put on that Scandi line. That's your balance. If I'm trout spay fishing and I've got a little five weight trout spay outfit or a summer steelhead outfit and a little five weight, then I'll put on this five weight tip. That's a balance. It still sinks at six inches per second, right? The sink rate hasn't changed because it says S6, but it's just lighter. So my engine, my head is lighter, therefore I need a lighter tip to do it. Pretty complicated. Tips are a complicated subject, but kind of understanding the significance of mass moving mass is a really good step to you understanding what's the right type of tip. And then the last type of tip we'll talk about, it's not really a tip, it's called a versa leader. We call it a versa leader, other companies make these, call them poly leaders, they're the same thing. They're basically leaders that sink. They're tapered leaders that sink. And they're great. I use a lot of them, but there's a couple of things to know about them. And the first thing to know about them is when you take one out of the packet and look at it, the front end, as you can see, is just an exposed nylon core. There's no coating on it. There's no mass to it, right? There's no weight in this piece of nylon. So this can't move a big fly. It's not gonna cast a big fly. There's just no mass to it. Second thing to know about it is as you come back a little bit to where the coating is, you can see the coating is starts here it's skinny. There's hardly any coating on that section at all. There's a little more coating as I go further back because it's tapered. But really, the majority of the coating is at the back end, at the butt here. That's where all the coating is. This will be the fastest sinking piece. This will have the most amount of mass. So the problem with versa leaders and poly leaders is they're not going to cast weight, but also when they fish, they don't fish really in a controllable way. I've got no sinking compound here. So when I cast this thing out, it's going to sink like this, right? And then eventually this might get pulled down. So to me, a versa leader is really a temporary fix. When I'm fishing my way down a pool with a floating line and I get to a spot where for whatever reason, I just need to get a little bit of depth for six or eight to 10 casts. Then I'll plug on my versa leader on the front of my floating line, fish that little section, come back out, take my floating line back on again and, and just fish away without a leader. That's what a versa leader is great for. But if you really want to fish consistently and get great casting and great fishing presentation, your tips, your true sink tips, are going to be far better options. So there you have it in a kind of a complicated nutshell. Piles of tips, piles of options, mass moves mass, that's a critical thing to remember. And really, the idea, as I said, is to understand what type of heads. Skagit heads, your mo tips and your T-tips. Scandi heads, your replacement tips and possibly your verse leaders. And those are your best combinations. Thank you very much for watching today's how to, how to understand sinking tips. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode and hopefully you learned a few things about it and hopefully you'll get out there with the right outfit, cast some beautiful lines, catch a couple of great fish. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>